Welcome back to the Big Horse Restorations YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to, uh, in today's video, we're going to tackle something a little different. Uh, we're going to be uh, freshening up Susie's instrument cluster. As you can see, it's kind of nasty. So um, it's pretty grody. So we're going to we're going to take this and uh, freshen it up, and uh, you guys are going to follow along with me. If you like what you're seeing so far, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. There's uh, much more to come. Oh, and real quickly, I just wanted to throw a shout out to my, my beautiful wife. Um, we wouldn't have Susie if it wasn't for her. She kind of brokered the whole deal in the, um, in the first place. And uh, so anyway, thank you, honey. I love you. Um, I appreciate all your support. just want to take a minute here to talk about something we here at Big Horse Restorations take very seriously. PPE. Yes. Going to the bathroom before you get started. You got a PP. No, personal protection equipment. PPE. So, glasses. Check. Appropriate attire. Check. Proper footwear. Check. And got to have some coffee. Ah, check. All right. Well, here we are. Um, this is Susie's instrument cluster. Um, she has the, uh, here, let's see if I can point this up. She has um, the just the speedometer, the fuel gauge, and uh, the idiot light cluster. The... Um, uh, some of the Mach 1s came with a tachometer here, um, which is really cool. I'd, I'd like to uh, um, upgrade this. Um, there's a gentleman out there, uh, Rocket Man, I believe his name is. I'll put a link in the description. Um, you can send these clusters in to him, and he will uh, uh, install a modern tachometer into this into this space here and uh still retain the uh, the lights here for alternator oil pressure brakes and the and the temperature sensors so um so i will probably send that off it's really not that bad um uh, expense wise um so i probably will eventually um uh, go uh, send this off to have done um you know i don't as you can see this thing is grody it's got dust and all kinds of stuff on it. The circuit card, I'm sure, is shot. Um, I'm impressed that I still have all the light socket, uh, uh, bulb socket. Oh, no, I'm missing one. That's all right. So, at any rate, um, we will, uh, so we'll start disassembling this. Um, the first thing we'll need to do is we need to take this uh, clear plastic. Um, well, it's not clear right now, but we need to take the plastic off. So, going to take some needle nose and there it's held on with these little uh, clips here and they are plastic and being that this is 40 years old um, you have to be kind of careful oh come on shaky so we're gonna squeeze in squeeze the bottom and pull that off Fight me on this. And you have to be careful because you don't, you can easily break the, the plastic. I'm going to try and recover this, this plastic piece. Um, I think whoever had the, there it goes. I think whoever had the car before me, oh, these are metal, they're not plastic. Oh, wow, okay, so we'll save these. Um, <clears throat> uh, so we'll go on to this next one here. And give it a squeeze, start pushing in through. There we go. All right. That right there. Let's 
So that's there's two on the bottom. There's one here and one here. These you can't get to the back side of, um, so it's a little tricky. And then I've got two more right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the easy ones out, and then we'll we'll deal with uh, we'll deal with the other ones. So while we're doing this, um, there we go. a lot of people are upgrading their their uh, dash clusters to from the uh, the old style filament bulbs. Um, goodness, man, that was... come on! There we go. Get out of here. Okay, so anyway, these old uh, filament style bulbs, actually that one looks like it's probably actually works. Um, a lot of people are, are upgrading these, these bulbs um, to an LED. Um, you can get LED replacements that will fit in these sockets. Um, the only problem is, and these, this, I don't know, you know, some other cars may not be so bad, my old Chevelle, um, the lighting in it wasn't too bad in, in the instrument cluster, but these in particular, the Mustangs, um, I've been on several of the uh, Big Horse uh, Mustang forums on, on Facebook and all that, and uh, they're just notorious for not being very bright. So um, the thing is, is when you upgrade to uh, LED, you can no longer dim them. You can't dim the, uh... oh, in fact, let me show you. You can get... I forgot I had these sitting right here. So you can get these these bulbs. And I'll put a link to these. I bought these on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link to these in the description. Um, but see, so you can get... So if you look, kind of a comparison. Um, so you can get an LED bulb. And these are much brighter. And um, a lot of the guys have been putting these in, um, in their clusters. And they uh it makes it's a huge difference so um between the two so um they have the same they have the same socket uh profile so um just take it and pop it in there um now these are oh yeah the other thing to mention too is uh LEDs are they're digital so they have a, a positive and a negative um these the old style bulbs they don't care so um so if you do get these and you put them in and they don't work, um, that's because you don't have the uh, the uh, positive and negatives lined up. So if, if you put it in there and don't and don't uh, and it doesn't work, then uh, you just need to pull it out, turn it around, put it in, and it'll work just fine. So um, this one, let's see, do they indicate? There is no indication here which side is positive, which is negative. So Hmm, you may have to take a look at that. So, okay. Um, but anyway, these are uh, these are the brand I got, uh, Yorkum. This is the box, um, and it has a little uh, removal tool. I don't know what the heck that is, but okay. But um, but that's th these are the ones I got. Um, they had uh, some pretty decent reviews and. Um, just what I got. Um, there wasn't any, uh, I think there was a, I was looking for quantity, um, looking for something um, relatively close to the same size as this because I didn't want there to be any clearance issues with uh, um, putting, you know, replacement bulbs in here. Um, so then you just go in just like that. So. So we'll set that off to the side here. Um, so we got those two off, those two off, and now these tricky ones. So what I did on the last one that I did is I took the screwdriver and just gently, here, let's do this one, so just gently wedged in here. 
We gotta can't put the gorilla mitts to it. You gotta really kind of finesse it, and it will eventually come out. These are rusted, as you can see, and that's because Susie sat outside for so long, so that just came out just like that. Um, we can probably those are that just looks like surface rust, just not eaten through. So I may uh. Let me uh, see if I can salvage those. I like the metal ones. They have some plastic ones that they use sometimes. Um, so let's see if we can get this one out without, without really. Oh, yeah, that's coming out just beautifully. There we go. So now the plastic comes off. And wow, that's bad. I think uh, the previous owner was spray painting the dash, and I don't think they masked off the um, the uh, plastic bezel cover. So, okay, we'll set that there. So now you can see the gauge is a whole lot better. They're really in good shape, actually, um, which is good. Even the uh, internal here isn't too bad. There's some fading where the paint, I don't know if you can see that in there. The light might be glaring. Um, some fading, the paint wasn't uh, covering very well um, there either. And same on this side too. There's kind of a, you can see a line here with that. And that's not a shadow. That's a, um, that's where it, uh, where it came all apart. Goodness, there's even leaves in here. <laughs> can you see that? Anyway. Okay. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take this thing completely apart. We're going to take it into the kitchen. Um, don't tell my wife and we're going to, uh, we're literally going to put not the gauges and everything, but we're going to take the housing into the kitchen and we're going to wash it. That'll be the first thing to really get it, uh, um, get it looking better and let it cleaned up. So we'll take these. Oh, and, and another thing I need to probably mention is when you're taking these screws apart, it's a good idea to get some little baggies, um, label them. Cause you know, if you're like me, you're going to, you're going to walk away from this at some point. Um, um, and you're going to, you're going to, you know, coming back and when you're trying to put it all back together, you're going to, you know, you just need to help yourself out. So get some baggies, put some stuff in here. Um, yeah. Just making a mess. Oh, at this point we can probably just pop this off. We're not, oh yeah, see it, it's just falling apart. Can you see that? Goodness. Yeah, these are, these were designed to stand the test of time. And I gotta get, uh, This little Duma flopper is a, uh, I believe it's a voltage regulator or something. I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? The other thing that I would like to do um, eventually is come back and this whole circuit card thing just bugs the crap out of me. I, I yeah, this, this just seems janky to me. I don't know, but, uh, but I'd like to do a wiring harness, a dedicated wiring harness to this. Um, and so for that, this will, this will be a later video, but for that, I bought, um, some of these. Let's put there. Let's go ahead and give a shout out to these guys. Um, they, uh, bought again on Amazon. I'll put the link on, on there, but, and we'll do this on a later video. But what I got were these little sockets that twist in just like just like that but they don't where these sockets have the contacts on either side here and when you when you push it in it makes contact on the circuit card these do not they just twist in um, and secure the bulb so but they have pigtails so and they're already pre-wired so um, so anyway we're gonna take a look at these uh, the circuit card We'll probably have to do a little bit of reverse engineering and um, a little bit of a ring out to figure out which traces, you know, are, are the ground. So, because as you, as you can see here, 
one of those sides is going to be the 12 volt positive side and the other will be um, be the ground so I have the pin out I've been looking at it already trying to figure out um, trying to figure out what uh, what we're going to do um, to make this happen um, I don't know if there's any uh, wiring harnesses um, like this that are commercially available um, but uh, um, but what's the fun in that you know we might as well just do it ourselves and, um, and go through all the pain and heartache doing that so that's Five sixteen. This is America. American standard size. And this is the original one that came out of Susie. So um, if that's correct, that's a seven seventy five thousand miles. So if that's if that's right, that's not too bad for a fifty year old car. Forty eight year old car. Forty nine. Uh, never do math in public. Which really the best thing to do when you when you take all this apart is take all the screws and just pile them all up together. That's uh, that's uh, that should be standard operating procedure anytime you're doing anything like this. Um, you know you'll you'll remember which you'll remember where which screws go where. That shouldn't be a problem. So the next thing on this piece, on this side that we're going to take off is the interior bezel. So inside here, this, this chrome and black piece, um, it unbolts as well. So we're going to go ahead and take that loose as well. of frustration right there. <laughs> Snap! All right, well, we're at here, here at the sink. Um, you're going to want a toothbrush. You're going to want your part because um, it's nasty. So go go get uh, go get your wife's toothbrush or your daughter's, you know, somebody's. Go, don't use your own toothbrush. Uh, go get somebody else's. So to use for this. So um, what we're going to do this off as much as possible as, as quickly as you can because um because this this plastic will rust i mean you know it's it's old so it's going to rust a little and uh um so you want to get it dried off as quickly as you can so it doesn't rust you know um we don't want to put anything rusty back in the car do we i mean that's not that's not how you restore a car all right that's going to wrap up uh, part one of this uh, video for refurbishing Susie's instrument cluster. It wasn't intended to be originally a, a two-part video, but uh, when I got into editing the video, it looked like it was it was obvious it was going to be a, a quite a long video. 
and uh, we wouldn't want to put everybody to sleep, not just yet anyway. So um, so I appreciate you following along. Hopefully it's uh, informative, maybe a little enter entertaining and uh, you know, and this can be applied to what you're seeing here can be applied to any, any instrument clusters in these old cars. So uh, um, it's basically the same thing. You take it apart, you wash it and uh, refurb the pieces as you put it back together. So, um, so it's a pretty simple process and uh, hopefully you're getting something out of it. Um, if you're uh, returning here, uh, if you're already subscribed, uh, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you're new here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. Um, that way you can get uh, something in your uh, email inbox that isn't about the coronavirus. So anyway, thank you uh, for your support and catch you on the next video.